Years ago, we fought like crazy to get coverage of any type in the media for so many of the issues we're talking about today. And it's a special thrill for me to welcome Molly Glenser to the stage. She's just been amazing in her coverage of everything green, everything important, everything not only from a design standpoint, but how all the pieces fit together. So welcome, Molly. First of all, I know everyone before me has said thank you to the Cultural Landscape Foundation, but a final big thank you, round of applause. Uh, <laughs> I promise I'll be really short. I know we're past time, and frankly, I, I'm sort of last and least here um, in many ways because I, um, I have covered parks probably since the beginning of the work at Herman Park with art. I got sort of sucked into the park beat because of visual art, which was my beat. But um, I actually have a history with that park of, I grew up in Houston, actually I grew up in Dickinson, which is halfway to Galveston, and uh, which is a city of pine trees, a town of pine trees, but I can't even count the number of Sundays as a kid that my dad drove us into Houston and we went to concerts at Miller Outdoor Theater. I mean, to me it seems like every Sunday of my childhood, but I know it, I know their, their schedule isn't that that quite that frequent. But I think that when you, and everyone here has talked about things that influence from them from their childhood, and, you, and, and it's so important what's being done today. We've talked about happening, you know, for the children of the future. So first of all, I want to, again, reiterate, I'm not a doer. I think what, what has awed me most about being in this room today is that this is an entire theater full of doers. Every one of you here has done something, more than even those of you I don't know, has done something to promote the future of Houston or whatever other cities that you live in, you know, by just by dint of thinking about the landscape in this beautiful, large way. Um, I have been, as I said, I've been a resident of Houston most of my life. I was born in Dallas, so I can't say I was born here. Uh, but for the last four years, I, my primary residence has been in Brenham, which is an hour and 15 minutes exactly. I know this because I drive those freeways. For many, many years, I lived in Montrose, and I drove downtown to work. And I always thought of Houston as the Emerald City because I would see the skyscrapers. And that, you know, the, I can never think of the names of all the buildings, but the, um, the, the vision, if, if you're driving into downtown from the west, is this gorgeous Emerald City. And I'm so happy to see that now we're talking about it as the Emerald City because of the greenscape that was all around it that I used to just drive by and think, oh, there's the kudzu growing over everything. <laughs> <laughs> and and the other thing about living out that what what has really come to my attention uh, living outside the loop um, on the weekends now is that as everyone here at the table has mentioned and some mention has has been made before me this city is 672 square miles there's a whole lot of it out there that is a park desert and I know in talking to Joe in the last few days and looking at some of the cities, some of the maps of where the city can use parks, it's astounding when you, if you look at, I, I think the, the maps are available on uh, the Trust for Public Lands website. If you go onto that, you'll see like how, you know, Houston ranked really, really low. I think we were 58 out of 75 cities. It was because of our access limitations. So this idea of the green grid, I know that's not the official name now, it's like Houston Greenways, right? Or there, this plan that's still coming together. So the bios, the bio system is so increasingly, incredibly important. But then beyond that, what's really important is getting sort of all those other connectors that are on land, what, if you want to call it the green grid. But, you know, understanding that we have 672 square miles city. So all these fabulous brains in the room, people who think about systems and look at the whole picture, I hope that what comes out of this as well is that you think about, truly think about the whole picture for the future. And in closing, I just wanna say, because I'm a journalist and I just take notes incessantly, I took a lot of notes today, but the one thing that struck me was contrasts. So these are words that I heard starting this morning until just now, and it's all about contrast. Houstonization, humanization, bifurcated, 
balanced. Oil, water, <laughs> maintain, sustain, simple, complex, private, public, nature, science, flood, drought, that's all a lot to think about, but the last two, now and next. Thank you.